Hi, everybody. I'm High Priestess Autumn Finis, located here in New York City. Be follow me on my social media platforms at Facebook Magically Blessed, Instagram Autumn underscore Finis One, Twitter Priestess Autumn, Periscope Autumn Finis, and on YouTube at Autumn Finis. Tonight is a very special broadcast. It's about recognizing abuse in the pagan community. May you be a Wiccan, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever branch of paganism that you are connected to. There is sure to be abuse. There is sure to be abusive leaders. And if you're not hip to the game, if you are inexperienced, you will probably get scammed out of money or quite literally get your ass whooped. So you really have to you really have to be aware of what goes on in the branch of paganism that you are in and I think more so in covens because you know a lot of people are now interested in joining covens and becoming witches and I notice a whole lot of teenagers calling themselves high priestess, high priest but have nothing to show for it. They just want power over other people or they want to feel like, you know, a big shot. I've never come across a teenager that is actually a high priestess. I've never come across a teenager that has produced anything in which witchcraft is defined as making change in one's life. So if you're a teenager calling yourself a high priest or a high priestess, you're lying, you're leading people astray, um, and you need to stop. Witchcraft is very real. Witchcraft is not what you see on TV and in the movies, it's much deeper than that. And if you don't know what witchcraft or Wicca is and you decide to join a coven, you're going to get the ass handed to you. I've been in two covens before I joined a coven in 2008 and I recognize abuse because my high priest tried to hit me, me. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know nobody is going to hit me. Because I will fuck you up. Hitting me is the quickest way to get your ass whooped. And I hit back. Okay, I'm a big bitch. I hit back. So, I left that first coven. And then I joined a second coven. In which you had to have sex with the leader. I don't have sex with just anybody. I don't just give my pussy out to anybody. And I spoke up about it. I'm not the type of person to sit quietly. When I sniff out some bullshit... And it's not happening. I'm sorry. My pussy is my pussy. I'm not just going to give it away to anybody. So that was my second cover I left. And I found my final cover in 2009. And that was the cover for me. And you know that in Wicca, when a student is ready... The teacher will appear. 
when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So if you're meant to be a witch and you show signs of being able to do witchcraft to successfully change your life, then that student, that teacher will appear and help you down the spiritual path. Abuse in pagan communities is a very important part of learning and growing as a witch. Let me say it again for those who didn't catch that. Abuse in pagan communities is an important part of learning and growing as a witch. There are predators out there, just like there are predators who snatch up children, have sex with children, human trafficking, those things exist in the pagan community too. And that can, that, those type of people in the pagan community can be much worse because they usually have a following of people who are insecure, low self-esteem, low confidence. I don't have low self-esteem. I don't have low confidence. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. So if I were recruited for joining a coven and I see that the high priest high priestess is blatantly doing things wrong. Oh yeah, you're gonna hear my mouth. Oh yeah, I'm pretty loud when I wanna be. There are predators in every community, but pagan communities present a particularly appealing environment to potential abusers. Pagan faiths, whatever they may be, have a constant influx of new and sometimes inexperienced members who lack the knowledge and support systems to ward off abusers. And abusers feed off of people who have low confidence, low self-esteem, and truly speaking, who don't love themselves. That's why I always tell you all, when it comes to love spells, you have to love yourself first. Or it won't work. No man, no woman is going to marry you, let alone have children with you, if you don't love yourself first. And that's a big thing now that we are in the month of February and Valentine's Day is next week. Abusers in the pagan community feed off of people who have low confidence and low self-esteem and who do not love themselves. These people make easy targets for those who would twist information, give you false information, and the often intense emotional experience of finding yourself in a new spiritual community. Even experienced members of our communities find themselves at the mercy of abusers because they don't know. Even, even experienced people of pagan communities, whatever the faith is, are subject to the to abusers. Often because we are not vigilant about protecting ourselves. Your priest, your priestess, if you happen to be in a coven, let me explain something to you. Your priest or your priestess of your coven cannot protect you from yourself. They can tell you what's right and what's wrong, but they can't stop you from hurting yourself. 
because you are in control of your own actions. And you know that being a witch means you have to take personal responsibility for yourself. There is no devil in Wicca to blame for the bad things that go on in your life. Witches don't believe in the devil. Witches don't worship the devil. All of that is a Christian stereotype to terrorize and control you. If you are going to be a witch, you have to take personal responsibility for what happens and what does not happen to you. There is nobody to blame. When you become a witch, you take on, you take on responsibility. When you become a witch, it's time to grow up. Abusers in pagan communities typically fit a profile. Some abusers in the pagan community fit a particular profile. They're often older than their targets and have a inflated sense of self-importance. They will frequently give off questionable credentials that supposedly make them infallible. People like that believe they are never wrong. People like that feel like they are, they know everything. They know everything you're going to do before you do it. They have a sense of self-importance and you question their credentials. You start to think, your intuition, the bells on your intuition starts to go off. Like, is this person for real? Did he or she really do that? I don't know. Let me check my intuition. I don't know about that. If your intuition is bugging you and keeps bugging you, you need to turn in and listen to it. Your intuition will never be wrong. Never be wrong. The abusers in pagan communities, they undermine the confidence of the people who follow them. Abusers in pagan communities undermine the confidence of the people who follow them. They do this in order to posture themselves as experts, as if nobody else knows the subject that they are teaching. They undermine their victim based on their youth, inexperience, physical, or what they may consider mental flaws. They have the tendency to make you see flaws when where there is no flaw, where there is no flaws. They undermine your sexual orientation, your gender, and your personal beliefs that disagree with their own. These tactics, let me tell you something. These tactics serve to break down their victims. These tactics serve to break down their victims' self-image, and bring them to be dependent on their abuser for, for to be validified um, in their practice for validity, validity, validity. I'm trying to say that word, validity. Let me say that again. <laughs> These tactics serve to break down the victims self-image and bring them to be dependent on the, ab on the abuser for validity and their practice. Some leaders, some abusers in the pagan community will give off enlightenment, but it's not really enlightenment, and healing to cultivate you into a level of spiritual understanding at the expense of your personal comfort, mental integrity, 
and your spiritual beliefs. Some leaders will isolate you either literally or through other means. They may keep you away from your family. They may not let you see or talk to your family. They will tell their victim to stay away from people who are not in the same belief system and refer to those people on the outside as outsiders, that they are quacks and that they are dangerous. Even if there is real potential to learn from those people on the outside. You can learn, because my expertise is Wicca and witchcraft and I'm a high priestess in this faith. You can learn about the craft from all types of witches. Or just learn on your own. But people rely on a priest or a priestess for solid information. When you have a priest or a priestess and you're part of a coven, the information that priest or priestess gives you must be true. A priest or a priestess must never ever speak their own mind. They must always tell you the truth. And it's not always going to be what you like to hear. But as witches, we must always be honest. Always. And I know I've hurt a couple of people's feelings, not on purpose, but because I'm honest. I have nothing to lie about. Nothing. Remember, I'm a Scorpio. And Scorpios are brutally honest if you ask them something. They're not going to sugarcoat it. They're not going to kiss your ass. They're not going to nose brown you. So as witches, we must always be honest. The The abuser tells their victim that the abuser, they tell the abusers, beliefs are absolute. And they diminish the victim's ideas and beliefs by treating them as though they are stupid, outdated, or childish. As soon as the victim tries to stand up for themselves or refute anything, anything at all that the abuser says, they resort to petty tactics, pussy tactics. It's pussy, the tactics that these abusers use. It's pussy. Somebody need to write that down. These tactics that these abusers in the pagan community uses are pussy. P-U-S-S-Y, pussy. Just that blunt. Let me tell you something. The abuser might bring up every misguided student that they have ever worked with. And they may say, they may cry, you know, crocodile tears and all that good shit and say, Oh, these students were, you know, so cruel to me. Um, these young people, I was just trying to help them, but they weren't trying to learn from me. They wanted to do their own thing. But these abusers failed to mention that they are the abusers. Abusers in the pagan community always blames the victim. That they have terrorized. Always. They say, oh, I'm just trying to shepherd these young people who are new to the craft to spiritual awakening. They're not doing that. They're abusing you. All the while that they're crying and doing all that type of bullshit, they are... They are feeding off the victim. It's just another. 
the victim is just another in a long, very long line of hurt, thereby guilting the victim into complaints into staying. Very often afterwards, after all this happens, will come the assurance from the abuser that the victim is the one. The abuser will try to make him or herself seem like they are the one. Like, you know, they got it going on. What they got going on is terrorism, terrorizing these young people into staying in their group and not branching out and eventually learning on their own or applying what they have learned within the coven to add to their craft to live a more magically filled life. And it's pathetic. The person they are, the person, they might say things like, I'm the person that you have been, wait, been waiting for. I'm special. And um, I'm the reason why everybody else that you work with hasn't worked out. Because I'm the one for you. I'm the teacher for you. But like I said earlier in this broadcast, they don't have any credentials to back it up. They're just talking out of their ass. The goal, the ultimate goal of these abusers are pretty typical. They either want to be powerful or they just want sex and lots of sex. These abusers in the pagan community, whatever branch you're a part of, their ultimate goal is to be powerful and they want lots of sex. They will manipulate their victims emotionally until they will do whatever they're asked to do. So if your leader wants a blowjob, your goal is to give them a blowjob. If your priestess wants you to eat her pussy, you will eat her pussy because you don't know any better, because you're in the wrong coven, or you're, or you're, or you're in the wrong pagan branch. They may say that for you to reach real spiritual awakening, you have to have sex with them. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. You do not have to do anything that you don't want to do. And I'm not just talking about Wicca. I'm not just talking about doing witchcraft. Whatever branch of paganism you are a part of, if you don't want to do it, then you have to speak up, stand up for yourself, don't be a baby, and say, I don't want to do that. And remember, nobody has the right to put their hands on you. Nobody. So that leader of the group of coven you're in might get pissy with you if you tell them no. Then get pissy then. So what? You mad? Stay mad. But my answer is still no. I'm not going to suck your dick. I'm not going to eat your pussy. Because I don't want to. And you have the right to say no. And that, like I said, is the ultimate goal of abusers in pagan communities. To have power and to have unlimited sex with you. What you do when you come across people like this is to run away. Run as far as your legs can take you. That's what you do. 
You run as far as your legs can take you. Block their number, block their email address, um, block them on any social media sites that you may be connected with. Um, do not call them, do not talk to them in any way. Full stop. No communication whatsoever. Do not speak to them. Tell your friends and anyone that is new to that particular branch of paganism, what you have experienced, and if you can, you can expose these abusers to. These abusers will fight hard to hold on to you, to keep you in their group, because if they lose you, they lose the control they have over you. Especially in Wicca, you don't have control over another person. You don't. You only have control over yourself. These abusers will resort to stalking and harassing you. When that happens, get the police involved, get a restraining order. Um, Pay somebody to beat them up. Um, what I would do is probably cut their brakes. One way or another, you're going to leave me alone. One way or another, you are going to leave me alone. <laughs> okay? Um... As soon as you identify them as a abuser, you must leave. There is no loyalty. There is no, oh, well, I've been with such and such for so long. I feel like I have to be loyal and stay with them. No. If you're kicking my ass every day, I'm not staying with you. I'm not. We're not playing that game. Because first of all, I'm the wrong bitch. And second of all, I'm going to kick your ass too. Only two reasons. If you can, without endangering yourself, you can, like I said, expose your abuser. Tell the owners of websites. Tell the owners of people who have online, who have covens online and other people in positions of power about what has happened to you and who the abuser is. They can help remove this person from groups and by doing this is protecting others from falling into their trap. Awareness is the best way to fight predators in our communities. You are still entitled to seek help and protect yourself. Your safety comes first. Now, if you are not yet out of the broom closet, that means you're not yet out as a witch. And you don't want other people to know that you have been in a abusive situation regardless of what the pagan branch is. Use your power. Bind that person. Put that person in a jar of vinegar. Put that person in a jar of graveyard dirt. Do something to protect yourself. Now, if you're following me on my social media platforms, I made a post a few days ago about witches having the right to protect themselves and you know I can't say it enough I'm the wrong bitch to fuck with I don't play that shit protect yourself take um self defense classes buy a gun buy a shotgun do something 
to protect yourself because nobody has the right to abuse you. If you stay in an abusive relationship, you're choosing to be a victim. And you don't have anybody to blame but yourself. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. That, you know, um, that whole saying, oh, abusers can't leave their abusers, that's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of bullshit. You can leave. You just don't want to. Because maybe you have started feeling sympathetic towards your abuser. Or maybe you see the abuse is meant for you. You may feel like you deserve to be mistreated. And you don't. And you know that people give witches a lot of grief anyway. Simply because we exist. And I've personally um, been in fistfights with people over being a witch. Because I'm not letting nobody put their hands on me. And you should not let anybody put their hands on you or abuse you in any kind of way. You know, don't let people call you names. Don't let people talk about your family, talk about your friends, none of that. All of that is abuse. And if you don't recognize it, if you don't stop it right there and then, that abuser will think that it's okay. It's not okay. And it's not funny. Because you don't know what frame of mind that person is that you're abusing and you don't know what will make them snap and you don't know what they will do when they do snap what if they decide to snap your neck is it still going to be funny and if you watching this broadcast is the abuser you're a um Cowardly piece of shit. Oh, I know. I see you guys. I see you guys and my comments, my inboxes, and the inboxes of other witches, and the comments of other witches. I see you guys. I just don't say anything, though. I just block you. Because they're like roaches. When you turn the light on, they scatter, they run away. You make roaches. And your safety comes first. So thank you for joining me tonight on this broadcast. Let me very quickly tell you again where you can find me on social media. Find my um, Facebook page at Magically Blessed. Find me on Instagram at Awesome underscore Phoenix One. Find me on Twitter at Priestess Awesome. Find me on Periscope at Awesome Phoenix and find me on YouTube at Awesome Phoenix. Thank you, everybody, and I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye.